This is without a doubt a case where I would arithmetize, uh, mostly because I do not trust myself. Look at how similar all these answers are. Uh, if I mess this up, I, I'm not going to notice it. And I could do this manual. I could kind of foil this whole thing out. Yeah, maybe there's a shortcut we can take if we really are confident what's happening. But I do not trust myself in those cases. The SAT is really good at making us think we are doing a very confident, convenient shortcut, and then we're wrong. So don't trust yourself. Know that traps exist, and you are much more likely to find ways to avoid them. And so I would just arithmetize. I would not do zero here. I would not do one because if I look at the answer choices, both zero and one aren't going to change if I do zero to the eighth versus zero to the seventh, one to the sixth versus one to the fifth. It's not going to make a difference. But if I do two, then I've got some little difference. So I can do that. And then this thing just becomes one minus two. So negative one, right? So one minus two. And then, so that's negative one. And then one plus two plus four plus, this is easy, eight plus 16 plus 32 plus 64. And at any point, if you don't understand the pattern of how multiplying by two again and again and again is going to work, you can just go to the calculator and do two to the sixth. Uh, but at this point, now I have negative one times, I would go to the calculator for this part, uh, one plus two plus four plus eight plus 16 plus 32 plus 64 is 127. So this whole thing is negative 127. So is that an answer here? So this would be one minus two to the eighth is 256. Nope, that's too big, uh, too small, I guess, technically. Uh, so that doesn't work. This is one minus two to the seventh. So that's 128. So that's negative 127. That looks good. Now let's double check everything else. I know it's not going to work, but two to the sixth, we already said, I believe, is 64. So yes, yeah, so that's one minus 64. That's negative 63. This would be one minus 32. That's negative 31. So there you go. It's B. No doubt. And that's the thing. The no doubt is the really important part of this, right? And I don't think it took much longer to do this than it would have any manual algebra. And I think anything shorter would have been basically you reasoning it out and thinking about how these things are going to combine. But like I keep saying, it, this is not trustworthy. Your brain on algebra is not reliable. It, it's There are plenty of times where you are super confident you are right and you end up being wrong. Now, another way we could have done this is we could have gone to Desmos because if these are equivalent, they should produce equivalent graphs. So we could just do a uh, one minus X and, and just substitute all those P's for X's, right? So uh, times one plus X plus X squared plus X to the third plus, oh my God, I'm gonna lose track of it. X to the fourth plus X to the fifth and we go all the way to six, right? Plus X to the sixth, and then we can close that. Oh, see, Tesmo sometimes does things I don't understand. So there you go. That's what it is. And then if we put in the right answer, so one minus X to the seventh, we can see it's the same, right? Turn that purple on and off, and it overlaps perfectly with the green. Now, if we had done a wrong answer, like X to the eighth, we would see that it's not right, right? I mean, you can tell that they're clearly going in different directions. Same thing with X to the sixth, different directions. And X to the fifth is close, but look at it. You can tell that it's not quite the same in all those places, right? Because exponents, the further you get away, the more they diverge. So that's it. That's another way to do it. Um, I am curious, please comment. Would you rather just do the Desmos? Would you rather arithmetize here? Um, I think regardless, you need to know that both will work. You need to look at this and instantly be like, huh, I could do regular algebra. I could arithmetize because P doesn't matter. Or I could put this in Desmos and compare. And then decide which one is going to be the most reliable, right? The fastest, the most reliable. And I think arithmetize for me is because I'm so used to arithmetizing. I think most of you are going to go to Desmos because that's kind of just like what you do when you're confused is, is you just go to Desmos. But I do think typing these things in is, is risky in its own way, right? You could mistype. It could take a long time to type. So just think about that before you make those decisions. I find it much easier to type two to the seventh in a calculator than I do to deal with the Desmos. So um, pick your poison, but let me know in the comments, what would you do?